Hello everybody, my name is Ramya Ramani. The topic of my presentation today is organic LED usage in digital displays. Here, I have outlined my topic under various subheadings which can be seen on the screen. Now, what is OLED? An OLED is a light emitting diode which is composed of a film of organic compounds. A few applications of the OLED are that they can be used in wristbands, tablets, desktop, monitors, TVs, data projectors and many other devices. Let us go back to the history for a minute. We know that the heavy cathode ray tubes were gradually displaced by the liquid crystal displays LCDs which became the dominant technology. LCD though was non-emissive and required a backlight unit which not only increased the panel thickness but also limited its flexibility and form factor. A huge breakthrough was made by Ching Van Tang and Steve Van Slyke from Kodak in 1987. They reported the low voltage and efficient organic LEDs from PN heterostructure devices. Little did they know what a profound impact their breakthrough discovery proved to be in the field of digital displays. After 30 years of intensive material and device development and heavy investment in advanced manufacturing technologies, organic light emitting diodes have grown rapidly, enabling most forms of digital displays such as foldable smartphones and rollable TVs. The device structure of an organic LED consists of a thin organic material film which is sandwiched between two electrodes. The electroluminescence performance is generally very similar for the two classes of materials that is the SM organic LED and the polymers LED. And the main difference though is in the deposition process of the thin organic film. Here we can see the organic LED diagram. The anode is transparent and is usually made of indium tin oxide, while the cathode is reflective and is made of metal. The thickness of the organic layer is very thin and can range anywhere in between 100 and 150 nanometers. When a voltage is applied between the electrodes, the charges are injected in the organic material. These charges are the holes from the anode and the electrons from the cathode. They move inside the material generally by hopping processes and then recombine to form excitants. The location of the recombination zone in the diode is a function of the charge mobility of the organic material as well as of the electric field distribution. After diffusion, the excitant recombines and a photon is emitted. The color of this photon is a function of the energy difference between the highest occupied molecular orbital and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital levels of the electroluminescent molecule. Let us talk about the current voltage luminance characteristics. The first graph on the left indicates the relationship between current density, voltage and luminance. Here the current increases exponentially and light is emitted above the threshold voltage. The second graph indicates the relationship between current density and luminance. It can be seen that the luminance indicating that the quantum efficiency is constant over a wide range is proportional to the current density. In the given equation, the luminous efficiency is expressed in lumens per watt. Here, this is the ratio of the optical flux to the electrical input and it is given by the equation above where V is the working voltage. Eta L and eta P are functions of eye sensitivity photopic response which is maximum in the green range. The main characteristics of organic LED materials have been listed. The first generation of efficient devices was based on fluorescent materials where the internal quantum efficiency is limited to 25%. The second generation uses phosphorescent materials which were up to four times more efficient than fluorescent materials. Nowadays, Materials used for organic LEDs are amorphous or semi-crystalline films. The efficiency is improved by doping the emitting layer with various organic dyes. Furthermore, by using these dopants, a wide range of colors from greenish blue to orange red can be obtained. The lifetime of a device is usually defined as the mean time to half brightness. Most prototypes developed so far have a lifetime of 6000 to 8000 hours at room temperature 
which is low for applications such as television or computer displays. In the three distinct degradation mechanisms, the first two can be solved by means of adequate control over the device fabrication conditions. But intrinsic degradation mechanism is not really solvable and remains a huge issue, especially for the blue color. The main feature of an organic LED pixel is that it is an emissive device which can be switched off and be completely black, whereas a liquid crystal pixel is a transmissive device which does not allow complete coverage of the backlight. Two types of display matrix technologies have been discussed, which are active matrix and passive matrix organic LEDs. In the passive matrix organic LED, the electrodes are oriented at 90 degrees from each other. The anodes and cathodes are perpendicular to each other and each intersection forms a pixel. A period of T by N is used as the addressing method for such displays, where T stands for the frame time and N for the number of lines of the display. The disadvantages of this method are that it has a high power consumption due to varying with the square of the voltage. It also has huge resistive losses in the columns and damage of the pixels occurs because of the high current. The active matrix organic LED makes use of thin film transistor arrays and storage capacitors to address each pixel. A thin film transistor, TFT, is a special kind of field effect transistor which is made by depositing thin films of a semiconductor active layer. The capacitor used here is aimed at retaining the information during a frame period. The active material LCD or organic LED is then placed on top of this active matrix circuitry and the counter electrode which is not patterned acts as the ground electrode. The deposition of the organic materials onto the substrate to obtain red, green and blue pixels is a major challenge faced by the industry. Accurate positioning and uniformity of the deposition are a must. Small molecules are currently deposited by evaporation through a shadow mask and polymers are mostly dispensed by inkjet printing. In the evaporation and shadow masking technique, we place the small molecule materials inside crucibles which are heated to 100 to 500 degrees Celsius in vacuum and induce the evaporation of the organic powder. A thin shadow mask of about 20 to 100 micrometers thickness is placed above the crucible and the substrate is set on top of it. This mask bears holes for one third of the pixels. Once the stack of layers of one color is deposited, it is shifted by one pixel to deposit the next set of pixels. Cost-wise, the maintained vacuum in the chambers and the poor deposition efficiency of the point sources are the main drawbacks, but it has still been successfully used in commercial applications. The inkjet printing technique is used to dispense polymer materials which are soluble in a solvent. The solution is dispensed onto the substrate through inkjet nozzles. The droplets of a few picoliters are injected relatively accurately at the inkjet head. Once deposited, the droplets are dried the solvent is evaporated and the film is formed. There is though a difficulty in obtaining a uniform filling of the pixel after drying. Psycho Epson and Cambridge Display Technology have been developing inkjet printing techniques for organic LEDs since 1996. In the color generation, patterning the pixels but also having them constantly emitting light in a given ratio corresponding to a satisfactory white color proves to be quite a challenge. Three methods have been observed for this color generation. In the red, green and blue individual pixels method, we can see that there is a shorter lifetime of the blue emitting materials and there are difficulties in depositing individual pixels. However, the devices exhibit good optical performances since the light emitted is directly seen. The blue emitter and collector converters, which is in figure B, is a simpler approach since only one color of luminescent material is required. Blue emitting structure is deposited first over the substrate and a red and green color converter film is then positioned onto the display. No shadow mask is required but it has a limited lifetime. In figure C, that is the white emitter and color filters, we can see that the emissive layers are deposited over the whole area of the display 
without any need to be patterned. Two or more luminescent materials are used to create white light which is then turned into red, green and blue with the help of a color filter film. A fourth arrangement was invented at Princeton University. This is the stacked organic LED or SO LED in which each pixel contains red, green and blue emitters separated by transparent contacts. The advantage of the SO LED is a significant improvement in resolution but it still suffers from brightness reduction. The next two slides list out the advantages and disadvantages of the organic LED which are self-explanatory. Based on the detailed functioning and structure of the organic LED that we have seen till now, various properties are used for various kinds of digital displays. Some of them are listed here. As we are evolving continuously, micro LEDs and mini LEDs are coming into prominence due to their luminance and lifetime properties. Let us see few display system configurations and their logic. Figure 1 shows the color conversion or CC emissive displays. Here, the red, green and blue chips adopted emit light in upward and downward directions. In figure 2, the chips serve as subpixels. The blue LED pumps subpixels in pattern CC layer. Absorptive CF arrays absorbs unconverted blue arrays. In figure 3, the backlight is segmented into zone structures. Each zone contains several mini LED chips to control the panel luminance and each zone can be turned on and off selectively. The blue mini LED chips pump yellow CC layer to generate white backlight and the CC layers scatters light up to two brightness enhancement films. Details of these measurement metrics are beyond the scope of the presentation. I shall be touching up upon a few prominent ones such as power consumption, ambient contrast ratio and motion picture response time in the next few slides. Pulse amplitude modulation PAM, which is also called analog driving is commonly used in emissive organic LED displays for micro LED drivers. It can be used to address both active matrix and passive matrix. In figure 2a, a storage capacitance CS holds the voltage so that the TD is kept open for the remainder of the frame time. Therefore, in active matrix addressing, the LED emits light for the whole frame time. In figure 2b, which illustrates the passive matrix circuitry, no storage capacitance is employed. Hence, each LED only emits light for a short period of time. Contrast ratio CR is a key display metric to achieve supreme image quality to enable high dynamic range HDR. It is generally perceived that organic LEDs show much better performance than LCDs in terms of contrast ratio. The basic motion picture response time or MPRT is designed to represent and quantify the visual perception of moving images across an active matrix screen for both the PC monitors and TV applications. Let me conclude today's presentation by quickly perusing on the topics that we have covered. Organic LED evolution, structure of organic LED, the advantages and disadvantages of it, the performance metrics and their usage in various displays, the next gen LEDs are few of the topics that we have covered. We have reviewed the recent progress and discussed the future prospects of emissive mini LEDs, micro LEDs, organic LED displays, and mini LED backlit LCDs. We understood that organic LED displays experience a trade-off between lifetime and luminance. This is the reason that in the upcoming years, mini LEDs and micro LEDs are going to be used in almost all kinds of digital displays available today and this is quickly moving towards the central stage. These are few of the references that I have used in my presentation today. Thank you very much for listening to me.